right, we'll have Coach give an opening remark, and then we'll take questions. Opening remarks, first and foremost, how's everyone doing? Good to see you here. I need a little more energy if you want some energy from me, because this is horrible. If I was in church, I'd get up and walk out right now. Hey, appreciate y'all. This is unbelievable. Uh, Brett, you did the doggone thing. I think we have the best commissioner in football. He's unbelievable. He's absolutely a legend. He's a baller. He's a shot caller. He's a boss. And I love him. Let me give you some points. Oh, much love to uh, Gus, Coach Malzahn, I mean, UCF, just ran across him. I'm just highlighting a couple of the coaches because they've been so kind, they've been so considerate, they've been so wonderful to me, and he recruited um, Shador out of high school. I remember going there in Auburn, and uh, he just has been the same consistent man since. He's uh, phenomenal. Coach Gandhi is a darn legend. So being at the Big 12 meetings and getting a chance to meet a multitude of these head coaches that have just welcomed me with open arms, they have been phenomenal. And Joey McGuire, uh, my son, Junior. Where you at, Junior? Well off media. He, uh, he played for Coach McGuire in high school. And uh, Joey has been the same consistent, great coach that he's always been. Joey, if you're out there, I love you. I appreciate you. You keep on doing what you do, except when we come to play you. I want you to keep on doing your thing. <laughs> but I love you, man. I really do. And you're doing a wonderful work down there, Texas Tech. Uh, Cincinnati game sold out. God bless that. Can't wait that they're announcing that. Um, to you all that say we only go in the portal, we signed 17 high school players last year and 13 played. So when we sign a kid out of high school, the expectancy is for him to play. All you kids in high school right now, when we sign you, we want you to play. 17 kids, 13 played. Uh, we played a total of 20 freshmen last season, including seven walk-ons. So if you are freshman and you walk-on, you have an opportunity to play academically. Uh, 2024, second highest GPA for the football team ever. 2023, highest GPA for the football team ever. That's uh, AP. That means at the prime. Okay. Uh, NFL experience on the staff, 16 coaches and staff with NFL experience, 159 seasons of NFL experience, which is unbelievable. Uh, impact, school application rose 20% including 18% out of state. Economic impact is crazy. I don't even want to get into that. Um, exposure as well. Now, let's get to what you want. Let's get to your questions. All right, questions for Coach. Please raise your hand. We'll get you a handheld microphone. First question will come here. First row in the right-hand side, far right end. You look good in your red coat, man. I love it. I, I, think, love, I, I love it. I appreciate it. Dion, welcome to Las Vegas. Uh, Thank yesterday, you. Commissioner, several coaches, players, the enthusiasm of having you in the Big 12. Two-part question. When you look at what you've done, Jackson State, first year at Colorado, um, the accomplishments and the eyes and attention that you've brought, mm -hmm. have you taken the moment to sort of sit back and appreciate? I know you've given a lot of love to your players and programs, but have you taken time to appreciate the worth and what you brought, part one. Part two, uh, I, do you, you have now One at a time, I'm, I'm 56. You, you can't do that. One at a time, give me one at a time, all right? Okay. First of all, thank you. Thank you for just understanding and recognizing those things. I don't have time to sit back and watch what was done because I'm so busy doing what I do. So I don't have time for, to. You know, even though my arms can reach that back to the pat myself on the back, I ain't got time for it. You don't like it anyway. Every once in a while I do it because I know y'all ain't going to do it. So I don't have time for it, but I appreciate it. And I'm thankful of the calling that God has on my life. I really am. Now we go to part two. Part two, with what you brought to the programs in the historic black colleges and to Colorado, do you feel an obligation with whom you are to perform at a higher level or yeah. coach at a higher level. Yeah, like I yes. Yes. I'm I'm judged on a different scale. I I my 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 wins are totally different than your wins. Your wins 
you just judging football. That's why I have to start out and give you education and academics and so forth. I have to give you those things so you understand there's a greater scope. I can't win nine games and we our GPA suffers. Our GPA can't be high, but we lose another eight games. We, we can't not go and grab high school players and you got a bunch of guys in the portal, uh, out of the portal that's getting incarcerated. My wins are different. We have to win in every area. That's the way we're judged. And I'm cool with that because we, we, we come a little different. So the expectation is greater. But it's not just football. It's been like that all my life. I've always had a greater expectation for myself. So the expectation you have for me would never outweigh the expectation I have for myself. Thank you. That's a wonderful question. All right, we'll go to the left side, third row in the middle. Hey, Dion, Colin Wilson with the Action Network. Over here. One question. Uh, what led you to the hiring of Robert Livingston come from the city? Oh, my Bank? God. They, just the opportunity. I mean, uh, we needed the defensive coordinator, and, and I'm a pro, man. I'm, and, and that's nothing against uh, the college coaches because we have some phenomenal college coaches, especially in this conference. But I'm, I'm a pro, so I like the relationships and the thought process of a pro. And Coach Livingston was, Livingston was recommended – to me by a, a, a few pros that, that I'm well familiar with and I trust, Mike Zimmer being one of them. And his interview process and his consistency and his thought process and his relatability just put placed him well above the other applicants. I'm happy I made the decision. And when we look back on it, I'm, I'm, first of all, I pray to God that I could keep him. Because I feel like we're going to kick butt, we're going to win, and he's going to be, a, he gonna be a, a head coach in college or pros or whatever he endeavors because he's that good. So I'm thankful and I'm happy for him, but he is awesome. When I tell you awesome, he is totally awesome. Okay, we'll go over here to the right side in the first row. We got another guy on the other side of the ball named Pat Shermer that's pretty darn good as well. I mean, really good. And his compatibility and the relationship with Shador is amazing. And what they plan on doing this season, I can't wait to see it myself. Yes, sir. Coach Prime, my name is Arnie Baysmore with Vegas Sports Today. Yeah. I want to officially welcome you to our amazing city of Las Vegas. Thank you. Now, my question I is, don't gamble, though, so you ain't getting that out of me. All right. Okay. With respect to legacy and impact, what legacy and or impact do you hope to have on the world of sports as a player and or as a coach? Um, both, really, I don't care. Like how you see me, how you look at me, I'm more apt to understand how I see me and how I look at me and how God sees me and how he looks at me. So really, I, I, I don't care how you see me. It, it, it's never gonna be enough. Nothing I do is ever gonna be enough. So. It, I'm cool with that. I've, I've understand, I understand that that is life and that's how life is going to be. But I plan on being a tremendous blessing to as many people that I can bless, especially those probably 120 young men that uh, puts on this CU helmet and go out there and uh, to play for our school and our program. So, uh, and to sum it all up, man, I just want to be known as a great dad. I think I got three sons here today, and I just want to be a great dad to them. That's it. Thank you, my man. I appreciate you. All right, we'll stay on the right side. We'll halfway back on the aisle. Coach, Tom Izzo, WDAY in Fargo, North Dakota. You're opening up with North Dakota State. Oh, You're a known God. FDS killer. Tell me what you know about the Bison. They're good. They're really up. darn good. And I'm mad at Rick right now for putting them on the schedule to open up with them. Like, can you give me a layup or something? Like, those guys are wonderful. Their staff has always been uh, amongst the best. Many people have matriculated from that staff to go to higher levels. Um, those kids play their butts off. They play, they're tough. Um, they don't make many mistakes. They're accustomed to winning. They don't give a darn about being at home or on the road. That does not phase them whatsoever. Uh, we just we just can't wait to, to see it. I know it's a national television game. I believe it's a Thursday night game. Hopefully not too late. Um, but we can't wait to see them. It's going to be a phenomenal game, phenomenal matchup. But that program is second to none. All right, we'll go to the left side. Sixth row on the far left side. Stuart Mandel from The Athletic. Going into year two, what are some of the things that give you confidence 
that this season can end a lot better than four and eight? When I see um, the offensive line and the way they train, the way they work, the way they go about their their job. When I see the defensive line coaches and the way they're on their kids and the way they're demanding excellence and the the way these young men are working and the athletes that they are and the bodies that they, they, they have and they've developed right now. When I see the receiving core staying out the practice to work with their quarterback, coming over quarterbacks, coming over there on off days to work with one another. When I see the running backs doing the same leg by a former walk on Charlie Alfredall, you know, when 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 I see the the, the special teams that you know, Mark Vassett is hearing right now, I think he's a darn pro and Mata that don't miss and Jace Feely and those guys that they can't wait to their time. They understand special teams mean that we're special. You know, when I see those the secondary, yeah, uh, shoot. And they, they get out of bed and want to play man to man coverage. I love it. And Shallow can't wait to hit somebody. Uh, you know, Cam Selman, uh, uh, so many of the guys, um, the change made from safety to linebacker with, with Trevor, I mean, and I really think this young man is is going to be the next Brian Erlacher. I think he's going to make that transition from safety to linebacker and be dominant. Like, I, I just see the want and the fire and desire from our young men, and I can't wait till you get an opportunity to see it as well. So I'm very optimistic on what we have um, on our plate this year. All right, we'll go to the right side, third row, right in the middle. Uh, Philip Dukes, uh, the five-star flex on on three. Uh, Coach Sanders. My dog. <laughs> as the father of three Division One football players, what did you learn during their process as a parent that's helped you formulate your recruiting style as a head coach? Great question. Uh, first and foremost, I've sat in all seats. The parent seat being recruited as the kid, now being the coach. That helps me tremendously when I'm recruiting. Uh, when I'm understanding what the parent is thinking, what the kid is thinking, now what the coach desires to, to want to know. It's been a tremendous asset for me to understand those facets of uh, this new recruiting age that is impacted tremendously by NILs and collectives. So I love it. Sometimes I don't like it, but I love it. And I love that these kids are being compensated somewhat for what they bring to the table. Um, I don't want them to put the bag before the game because if you have the game, the bag is going to come. I want them to understand that. But I just don't want to take away from the purity, the purity of this wonderful game that we have. College football is phenomenal, man. This conference is phenomenal. Look at, look at where we are. You've got to be kidding me. Man, I'm a brother from Fort Myers, Florida. And I'm sitting up here in the darn end zone in Las Vegas talking to the whole darn country about a childish game that I played when I was a shawty. Don't you understand how powerful and how wonderful it is? And I'm so darn thankful to be here. So I try to relay that to all our young men. This is a moment, man. You better maximize it. And let's go get it. But thank you. It's a wonderful question. All right. We'll stay on the right side. We'll go halfway back in the and center aisle. And we're going to interview after this, right? I got you today, right? Okay. All righty. We'll go back halfway back on the right side on the center aisle. Coach Prime, Alex Blackburn, College Football Dogs. Uh, with all the media attention surrounding your program, how do you stay focused on the main goal, which is winning games? How do you keep yourself and your team focused? Well, you keep the main thing the main thing. Um, the main thing never should transfer itself. Winning is what we're here for. Uh, as far as the focus and intention, I think ever since I stepped into Florida State in 85, it's been like that for me. This ain't new to me. I'm not new to this. Like we say in the hood, I'm true to this. So this is new to some of you all, and you want us to change. We're not going to change. We're going to try to do things being smart, tough, fast, disciplined, with character. That's what we're relaying to all our young men. But the cameras and the lights, I, I think I haven't seen one kid here today that said he didn't like that. He may not like the process, but he likes the 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 package that you wrap him up in and you put him out there. All these kids are excited about the EA sports game, right? There's their scores and their levels. 
they want attention. They want affection. They want love. They want adoration. Adulation, I'm sorry. Yeah, we give you that. But you got to work first so you can understand the consistency thereof. It's going to take you to where you want to go and retire mom and dad, if that's what you please. I will right, we'll stay over here on the right side. Third row right in the middle. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good. How are you? You go, girl. I know you. <laughs> Uh, Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. We talked during spring and throughout last season the importance on stopping the run. You yeah. look at a guy like B.J. Green and your defensive line. Yeah. How is he going to be a leader in achieving that goal? B.J. Green is already a leader. Do you know that B.J. Green played for me when he was five through seven years old with truth in Dallas, in, well, South Dallas? So we he's been a part of my life for a long time, and uh, – they raised him right at Arizona State, and for him to come over now, it's, it's phenomenal. His work ethic, the way he approaches and attacks the game, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, his want, his desire, his will. I just got finished doing the interview, and they say, well, you have two young men that are projected probably to be the top five picks. I say, yeah, but we want four in the first round. And the only way that's going to happen is we win, and they are dominant. And I think B.J. Green could be one of those guys. And I think he will be one of those guys because he wants it that much. Um, <laughs> Shane, uh, Ron Bill, Amari McNeil, um, just to name a few, Anquan is uh, Tofik, uh, Chidozi, uh, TC, that's my dog from uh, Arkansas. I mean, we have some guys inside there that can flat out do it. Uh, outside, we have some guys that can go get the quarterback as well. We just want to be in the position to allow them to be the best that they can be. And that's one thing that Coach Livingston is doing well. He's not coming in trying to remake everything and reinvent the wheel. He's like, let's find out what these guys can do well and let them do what they do. And that's what we're going to do. That's the formula. I've told you guys, that, that, that's, that's what we do, okay? That, that's how we come in. All right, final question. Far left side. About Not a question. I'm just having a good time. Now you got to go? <laughs> Run out of time. We got a shot clock. Joey, did they give you a shot clock? <laughs> How you doing, Coach? How you doing? Omir Khan, uh, TG Sports here. I have a quick question regarding building a winning culture at yeah. CU. What does that mean? What does a winning culture mean? I want to know what that means. Because you got to be a winner to understand what that winning culture means. Everybody want to know about the culture, the culture. What is culture? To me, culture is day in, day out, putting in the work. Uh, Lifestyle. Day, day, yeah. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Yep. Okay. Um, so progressing in that general area right there as far as the winning culture side uh, last year you guys started off strong you did kind of fizzled out a little bit towards the end of the year but I remember you still talking about continuing to build that winning culture day in day out do you feel the guys that you brought in this year uh, have, are going to be able to help you fill those gaps I don't doing? I don't talk about culture that much so that wasn't me but I, I do talk about the consistency thereof of the goal and being consistent in whatever you do. So if you you, you have a team that's that got to be a little more physically tough, you, you got to develop that. If you got mentally tough, uh, strategically satisfying, and from the coaching staff's point of view, um, you got to understand that. But culture, everybody's on this word, this word, and I don't understand this word one bit. And somebody got to help me understand what that word culture means. Um, an environment, an uh, understanding of winning, you want that. I, I feel like I'm a winner. I know I'm a winner. So whatever I display, however I go about my job, my work, my business, my personal life, that's, that's of a winner. That's all I know. I don't know anything else but that. So in due time, and due process, we're going to reach that goal because we're going to get there because I know I'm going to get there. And I'm not going by myself. Is that it? That'll do it. Coach, thank you for your time. Wow. God bless y'all.